Hey guys, so I didn't go to sleep yet. I decided to stay up fixing this until it was fixed. And I just finished testing it on Fedora, Nabora, Arch Linux, Cache OS, and Pico OS 4. Okay? Great. Now that we got that out of the way, I made some changes along the way. I had somebody say that the script was messy and it didn't look right when it got to the menu and that the menu made no sense. He had a clippy profile picture, so we all know where he comes from on this mindset. Uh, it's unfortunate. But I decided to make things look more professional and clean them up, as you can see. So, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Definitely. So, instead of having this wall of spam where it installs things and you see wine tricks go through the necessary emotions, what it will do instead is you don't see any of that and it just goes through this it will tell you each step uh one by one so you know what's going on and if you can't hear it i am very tired and i'm very happy that i finally got this all worked out i did try to make a tui installer which is well a terminal ui but did not work out very well uh because it wouldn't do the final step of allowing me to do the drag and drop thing in the terminal and install the application and whatnot and then we had another issue and it was a corruption issue with win metadata oh boy that was a problem I, I i solved that thankfully there was another issue that people were having where it would not set windows 11 that seemed to be very common thankfully that is fixed and i've tested that 15 ways to sunday to make sure it was tested now you may be asking why don't i test linux Mint? why don't i test ubuntu why don't i test soren because I do not feel like writing a script for outdated distros like Pop! OS or Mint or Ubuntu or so on and so forth. These are outliers. Even Debian 13 has better support than they do at this point in time. And that says a lot. So it would be more time and effort put in to making those outdated distros work. And then unfortunately that would bring down the newer distros and it would just be not a good idea, okay? All right, so I'm leaving getting it to work up to those people who run those distros. I'm not going to bother. It's simple. You need to meet the dependencies. If the dependencies are not met, it will tell you. The script is very, very, very important in its wording. All right? So if you are on Zorn, if you are on anything else it will literally relay the message that you're not officially supported by this script please install the missing dependencies to continue simple as that so what we've done so far we've installed debt.net uh, framework 3.5 4.8 currently installing core fonts and then after that vc run 2022 will install okay now you can do this all from GitHub. I'm just using what's on my computer locally because, well, GitHub sometimes lags behind. Now, I'm gonna get asked some questions about my current desktop environment. No, this is not KDE. No, this is not GNOME. This is Hyperland. I am using what's called Quickshell to make the top panel, that is a panel, and the bottom dock, that is a dock, uh, and, and including the desktop widgets, which are actually currently on the other monitor, but whatever. I have a video up about this that goes over all of it and explains everything. Okay. So you should be good. Now I did remove a dependency, which was all fonts, uh, because it just took too long. Uh, that's another update that I did. So the installation's a little bit quicker. I did update the legacy installers as well for this new look and design, and I updated them with OpenCL support, so it should kind of work out of the box. I'm not sure if it works for AMD users. I don't know what's needed for that. If anybody wants to tell me in the comments if you got it working, uh, let me know and I'll add those dependencies to install. Uh, if it detects you have an AMD GPU, I can't promise it won't call you poor. That's a joke, by the way. It won't do that. But it helps to know this type of stuff, you know, that way I'm able to help you a little bit more. And uh, 
I would appreciate it, you know? Also, if you've used an older version of this installer and you want to un uninstall the current version, all you got to do is go to your home folder. There's the new menu, by the way. And you'll see a dot affinity Linux. Just delete it and then, you know, run the script again. So here's the new layout. Okay, we're going to just supersize this. So as you can see, the new affinity is at the top. It's called the Unified Application, the new Unified Affinity application that combines photo designer, publisher, more and a singer, modern interface. This is what it does. And then there's Affinity Photo. We all know what it does. It's the alternative to Photoshop. Then there's Designer, the alternative to Inkscape or whatever that other Adobe application is that no one really uses. And then there's Affinity Publisher. Uh, that does stuff. Magazines, books, print materials. Great. So we're going to select one and it's going to run through some stuff. And then it's going to ask you to drag and drop the installer in. So we're going to do that. And then it's going to ask you to press any key to start the installation. And after that, uh, you're going to get this. And I'm going to hit continue. It will obviously ask you if you want to install it or not. And then there we go. So, uh, that should be it. We can press six to exit and I gotta go make sure that this one last bug is fixed because I swear to God, I fixed it and it better be fixed. So it's in here, please. Yes. Thank you. Oh, that's so much better. So yeah, uh, that's awesome. It will just be called affinity and it has a custom icon that I made. You can see it on my dock right here. And when I click this, Please don't tell me that bug is still around. It is. All right. So I have a channel in my discord. Um, it holds a certain file. Okay. Cause I still have to fix this. It does. This doesn't happen on any other script, by the way, it holds what's called a win meta data. Uh, it's a zip file, a zip folder, and if you right click it and extract it, it will create the win metadata folder. Uh, what I currently need to do is go and delete the one that's in here. Where is it? Drive C, Windows, real time troubleshooting, huh? Fun. Uh, we're going to delete this. For some reason, that goes corrupt, and I don't know why. And then that's it. And then this should just start up. Yeah, there, that fixes it. So if you have that issue, I guess I didn't fix it yet. I'll figure it out. But uh, when you go into edit settings, as the thing tells you, you should have this enabled. So it should be working and note your GPU. So that's the thing that we did today, which was nice. So uh, it should also happen on photo. Uh, designer and publisher if you're still using the older stuff and then we got to talk about other things yes this does have AI but to use the AI you have to be logged in if you are not logged in the AI stuff is not enabled you literally cannot use it you're just using the normal affinity photo designer publisher that's it okay there's there's like extra stuff here uh, and and that's all Currently, there's a bug uh, where the settings and stuff does not work. That happens. It's whatever. And um, about opting in and out of things. If you do not sign in and the AI is not active, then it is not seeing what you're doing. And no, you do not need to be online to be able to use this. You can use this offline. I've done it plenty of times. It is in the facts. It's in the readme. This is free. Okay. The only part of it that's not free is Canva AI Studio, which was never a part of Affinity to begin with. So all you do is you end up getting this small extra part, which you can make it go away. Okay. And uh, yeah, there you go. Why, why, why does that ant have wings little buddy 
You shouldn't be inside. You're you're a flyer. Go fly. Sorry about that. Every building has its quirks, and this is mine. Anyway, with all of that, I hope that clears everything up. This is completely free, minus the Canva AI Studio. Okay, you need to log in to download this, obviously. Uh, if you didn't, I would have included it to automatically download and install. So there you go. I hope that clears some things up. Now, if you're looking at this and going, ooh, it's bad because it's not FOSS, I need you to get your brain out of the toilet and get your brain out of Reddit. Just because something is not open source, it doesn't make it inherently bad. That is incorrect. That's not how things work. And it's gone again. One second. Thank you. Uh, I'm on Hyperland, and that's a bug. Yeah. I'm going to say this real clear as best as I can. This is professional level application. This is not Krita. This is not GIMP. Uh, this is not whatever other substitute that is FOSS that you're wanting to bring up. Okay? This is for people who actually care about their workflow and need something fast, modern, and efficient, like DaVinci's Resolve versus Caden Live. You can't compare the two. Caden Live is an absolute goddamn joke compared to DaVinci's Resolve. Okay? It's as simple as that. It will never be as fast. It will never be as efficient. It will never be as useful. And it will never provide the same workflow. It will never have the same optimizations. One is a professional grade application built literally for Hollywood, but given to the public for a one time fee of $300. And the other one is a hobbyist application that really. I don't know, I would have no use for in my entire life. So when you really go to think about these sort of applications, you need to understand professional applications versus hobby uh, open source ab applications. The professional application is going to win hands down performance, speed, tools, efficiency, filters, plugins, everything. Okay. That's just how it is. Don't put something down just because it's not open source. Not only does it make you look foolish, but it makes the open source community, Linux in general, look foolish. You do not want to be one of those gatekeepers. Okay? This tool is extremely useful. Now, I'm going to drag something in it. And I want to show you an important message. Opening legacy documentation. So just don't show again. Do this. And then... It's stabilized, okay. You want to save as and just save again. Okay, that's it. That's how you turn your old stuff into your new stuff. All right. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you helped. This was an installation guide. This was everything, explanations, you've named it. If you appreciate this, subscribe. It means the world to me to grow a community and to see more and more people leave comments and that I can interact with and talk with because again it opens up possibilities for future videos and stuff uh liking the video helps leaving a comment helps so so on and so forth this is a free application and honestly that's impressive that's more than Adobe could ever do so no cancellation fees they don't steal your work remember that Everything is opt-in and opt-out. Appreciate that for what it is. You could also become a member on my YouTube channel. Uh, there is a members-only video that is staying members-only until certain changes are made to the GitHub. It's about having Adobe After Effects working on Linux with working CUDA support. So it's definitely worth it to go check that out. There's, there's some weird stuff going on. I don't like them including binary blobs and things like that, so... I'm not going to release the video until that's fixed, and when it is fixed, I'll just do a whole other video. But members can go watch that now. Uh, they can go install that right now and deal with whatever they want on that. It's just, I don't need to be blamed for certain things. So it's there if you want to go view it. Bye.